Hey, yo, what's up? On this episode, we have the a good friend of mine, comedian and uh, and self-styled uh, married swinger, uh, Mitch Patel. We discuss um, what's what it's life, what it's like to swing with your wife, um, the, how to be a good lover. I, t- I actually give some um, some uh, kind oral of lingus, sex tips, yeah, some oral sex tips, uh, letting go the ego, how to get over your your trust and the value of trust in relationships. Um, I also would love it if you guys, uh, we do some really in-depth stuff behind the scenes on the Patreon. If you want to check that out, go to Manschool202. I'm sorry, go to uh, www.patreon.com slash Manschool202. You can get on that and support us, man, because we really need you guys to help us support it so that we can keep making making these shows and keep digging in um, and this I, week's uh patreon episode dante goes into some uh some more detail about what's going on in his personal life and the di- the divorce and what's going on with the baby and it gets uh it gets intense but it's good but it's all behind the patreon wall uh patreon.com slash man school 202 uh come and support us we appreciate it thank you i'm not an alpha male i'm not a beta male either i'm just a better man better man well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it. Uh, we got a special guest in the building, a good friend of mine, but I want to first and, the first and foremost, Harry, how you re- How you doing, bro? You ready to rock and roll? Absolutely. Other than having a tough time keeping these gators down, I'm doing great. Difficult, difficult. difficult. Pra- pimping ain't easy, but if you practice, it gets easy. Just like ping pong. Mm. Um, <laughs> let, let me get to my Pimping guest. Pimping is because- just like ping pong. <laughs> it's exactly like ping pong. I mean, there is paddles in it. Listen, um... <laughs> The, uh, this dude's a good friend of mine, funny, funny dude. He's been on everything, Comedy Central, all kinds of shit. We've been friends for a long time. I don't, I don't get to see him nearly enough. Like, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat what he said to me. He's one of the few dudes that I like in this business. Give it up for Mitch Patel, yo. Give it up for Mitch. What's going on, brother? Thanks, guys, look at my, look at my penis. <laughs> Mitch got Mitch still married to the same lady. I'm married to a beautiful lady who probably should not be married to me. <laughs> every day we've been married eight years now. I still am shocked every time I walk into the kitchen that she, I'm like, oh my god, you're still here. Right, right, right. Now, she, Mitch, like, you, back in the days, y'all were. Like, like, don't like. Here's, let me just say this for the record. I'm not gonna get into it, but Milk Mitch has a a, a fucking stat sheet. Like Mitch used to put him down. He had he he put a lot of points on the on the board back in the days. Dude, I'll tell you something. I used to think that I was like pretty pretty good. No, no, you were you were no until I had Greg Fitzsimmons on my show. Really, I had a podcast and Greg Fitzsimmons came on and he's in the thousands he's in the thousands i'm in the hundreds low he's in the thousands you know what it is it's that flat cap it's that plaid flat cap they get some (laughs) no where i am not i used to i i i definitely i definitely got my share of stds but nothing like greg fitzsimmons yeah but you 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 knocked down some bangers, you know what I mean? Like like some okay. s- some pinnacle bangers. We won't get into it, but you definitely knocked Are down some. Are you saying bang- Dante not just quantity, but quality as yeah, well? Yeah, he knocked he okay. he took down some some jammies, you know what I mean? Some some iconic figures. Um but <laughs> Mitch, now when you I remember I, I think it's the same wife, but y'all were y'all were kind of swinging a little bit in the beginning, yes? Yeah, we still do that. Um it slowed down a lot because of the child. Right. How old's uh, the baby? Four. Nice, nice. He's four, and uh, and he slowed us down. My, uh, I, I wouldn't Bastard. say we're. I wouldn't say we're <laughs> swingers. Swingers are those people that go to like parties and just pull up their tops and start having sex with people. We are like selectively. If there's another hot couple and right. we get mm-hmm. along with them. Like we will definitely like have some fun. So kind of like a soft, what we would call a soft swing, like a soft, you know, soft or selective swing. It's it's perverted no matter what it is. But <laughs> it's, it's definitely not. 
Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> it's funny because I remember back in the days when you met her and you were a happy dude. It was like, you know, the fact that you I mean, I think, you know, she was a little bit into girls. She was into yeah. girls, too, but more like I think I, when we talked about it, I think you she was like 60, 40 girls to men. Like she liked dudes more. But she, yeah. uh, she like oh, you remember everything. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. My wife, you fuck my wife. Didn't no, you? no, <laughs> never, never. I, I'd let you know if I did, but I would. I didn't. Um, and that she's a banger, Harry. Although she, wow. she would like you. You're a flavor. You're just likes flavor. She likes to try out different kinds of flavors. Yeah. Well, she and I remember how happy you were because I mean you had a lot of traditional relationships, and then when you met her, it, it was just really. I remember well, how happy you were, you know. Well, here's the, here's the question: are, are you guys married? Who, me Both and Harry? Yeah. Oh, I, I I am now. Yeah. No, not anymore. And, no. Yeah, I don't think marriages work otherwise. I think either people start cheating, or mm. they just get they just get bored. Get bored. And I resent think that, the person. Yeah, I no. think swinging or not swinging. It's not even an open relationship. It's just opening up the doors to like. Like, you know how, like, this is how I look at it. You know how sometimes you're at, the, you're at, a, you're at a friend's house and, you, and you're looking at his wife while she takes the turkey out of the oven and you're like, man, what would that be like? Yeah. Well, we mm. just go that extra step. Right. So you don't and have you to find out. An affair. Yeah. yeah. You find out. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and then you fuck her and the turkey and you have a yeah. blast. <laughs> Now, let me ask you this. Well, I'm because... going to Mitch's for Thanksgiving. That sounds like a hell of a... <laughs> you got to bring a hot a... wife. Yeah. You got to bring a hot wife. Yeah, I got a hot one. A... I got one. I got one. Okay. A girl. I got a hot girl. She's got a, a hot girl. We don't have to be married. Is that part no. of the kink, yeah. Mitch? Yeah, we, we, we have to be married. Out. You have to be. <laughs> yeah, because if you're not married, you don't, you're, not as, you're not as committed to like how intense the lifestyle can be. Does that make sense? No, mm -hmm. explain. Okay, so if you're married... You know what it there's a certain respect you have for another guy and another guy's wife if you mm. know that like both of you are committed. If it's real easy to get if you don't if you haven't made that commitment, I really believe in that commitment. And if you haven't made that commitment, I, I wish I could make it more eloquent because I'm I know no, no, you're doing you're doing you fine. What it is. Yeah. Keep going. There's, there's an understanding that if you're with a guy who's giving you his wife, yeah, he understands what a big deal that is. And he has a certain respect for your wife that someone who's single doesn't feel for their, just their partner because they're it's because I believe that piece of paper makes it really hard to break up. So you're forced to work on it more. Whereas, whereas I, I mean, I really do. I believe in the institution of marriage. I believe in the institution of marriage with it, within this lifestyle that you should be with other couples and everybody could sh 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 sort of share their body parts because the other way, I feel like uh, if you're single, that person is not as committed to you as a marriage because you mm. can end gotcha. that relationship. It's it kind of like sense. the way somebody is a little more reckless with the rental car than one that they got. Oh, a my lease God. On. That's dude. Harry, <laughs> yeah. that's I'm going to use that analogy. Go for it. Steal it from you. <laughs> Please. You're right. You're going to you're going to you're going to take care of your own car a little better than a rental car. I love right. that. I love, right. it. I love it. Now, it's also kind of a thing where. Um, it's almost like I, I think also like because we had a we had a one of my boys came on. He's like a YouTube celebrity. Right. And he's a fan of the show and the younger dude. The great Sneeko. We could say his name. Yeah, give it up to uh, Sneeko. Sneeko. He wants the publicity. Show. It's not secret. Right. He was on the show. We broadcast it. Right. Right. And he, <laughs> he, he you know, he's a young dude. Like and he's 22 and he went to a, a, a like a swinger sex party. Yeah. And he wanted to kind of such a sound, but his girl is young and smoking hot, right? right? And and then so he went there and then he was like, everybody wanted to fuck my 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 girl, and then yeah. everybody else in there is just like threes and fours. It's like a like he's at a super like a naked supermarket. And yeah. every yeah. time he turned around, everybody's got their dick out hovering over his girl, and then he's he's fucking people's aunts. You know, that's like, so that's so apropos. Yeah. I love him already. Yeah, there's yeah. always like there was this guy who used to come with his wife. I can't do names, mm. but she was a fucking smoker. She was a she was just a smoke show. And right. uh, and uh, he said to me 
And my wife is hot, so I don't have to worry. But he said right. he, he hates going out to these parties because of the same reason. Since everybody keeps trying to fuck his wife constantly. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and he gets it. But, you know, and, and the other thing is, is he, he only had an average penis. So all these guys were trying to impress his girl by showing how big their penis was. And right. quite honestly, in this lifestyle, like that's not Doesn't a matter. girls. They can no, fuck no. whoever they want. So they don't yeah. give a shit. And, and that's kind of like a turn off to a girl in the lifestyle. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's I'm going to tell you, like, I, I, I did a little soft swinging, like where I, you know, I would I like that. girls and girl, you know, like, bring another girl in or whatever. Or I would go somebody she was interested in. I would fuck her. But um, yeah. he um, it was it, it was funny, like that. Um, I feel like I've been in situations where like it was like two, like me and my boy. And on a girl. And what I find is I don't even like that because yeah. it's always tends to be this. It's kind of like it's kind of like riding a motorcycle like you. You can't have too many testicles and somebody's going to get into an accident when you have that many balls around because everybody's yeah. trying to one up everybody. So, yeah, yeah, I tend to agree with you on that. And that's and that's the problem with isn't that the problem with just. Mankind everything. Yeah, and everything. womankind is like everybody's trying to compete and everything, and it's just such a fucking waste of time. And I saw somebody, I wrote a quote down that I try to look at every day and remember, and it said, uh, uh, co Comparison is the death of pleasure. Mm, right, that, that right. When you're just in your head so much, you can't just enjoy your life. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We're always trying to one up the next guy. And, and then you finally come to the conclusion where you're like, there, there comes a great point in your life where you reach a certain age and it hits you. There's always going to be someone better than you, funnier than you, yeah. bigger dick than you. And there's always going to be someone that's got a smaller dick than you. That's not as funny as you. Right. It's not as successful. And it's just fucking worthless to just yeah. obsess over it because it's just, it's, it's just a part of it. So every now and then in the lifestyle, we meet a couple where the husband is just a, just a beautiful human being. Right. And he's a good guy. And, and, uh, and those are the couples that we tend to like hang out with. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting thing. It's like the, the removal of the ego in this, in, in that, in, that, in any of those sexual situations. Um, it's funny. I got a call from a guy. So I do, I do like uh, relationship counseling and stuff. Yeah. Um, I've been doing it for about five, six years now. And I had this kid and he was um, he called me up and he was like, he didn't he, he went down on this girl. He thought he was a, he was like 24 years old, went down on this girl and he thought he was a master of eating pussy. Right. And I and I was and he says he asked he asked the girl, how was I, you know, because he figured he was, gonna, you know, like, first of all, you don't never ask that. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but he she was like, ah, like a six. Right. And so he was oh, blown right. away because he was a six. So he called me up for, for pussy eating advice. Hmm. And so now I'm trying to, to, to articulate what this is and what it, what it is. Being a good lover in general is being present. It, it's, so how do you teach somebody how to be present and how to pay attention? I love that. So I, what I what I have is what I do is when I try to teach that what I've learned I is that. I teach them is that um, you have to remove the variables of, of. So if you're eating pussy, there's multiple variables, meaning for what for whatever girl you're dealing with, some like direct contact with the tongue, some like on the hood, some like small circles, some like underneath the hood, some want pressure, some want soft and then pressure. And you you have to figure that out. And the only way you can figure that out is if you watch if you watch her diaphragm, if you watch her her breathing, her breathing is the, the telltale. That's where you know where you're in. The, you're you're in the ballpark. So I, I always was thinking about how do you get to the point where you where you can remove as many variables as, as possible. First thing, movement, her movement and your movement creates a whole nother variable. So what I was telling him, what I do is I'll take my teeth. I'll mount my teeth on the mound, you know, the, the pussy yeah. mound. Right. Yeah, right. This is brilliant. 
right? So that keeps your keeps your mouth in one place, right? right? The way you stick your tongue in or out, you can control pressure by how far you stick your tongue out or how far you stick it retracted in, like or you're like uh, 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 like that. The other thing is I lay on top of her legs, slightly open, so I eliminate her movement. So if she's squirming on movement, I can see. You can stay mounted. Yes, yes. And so as I'm more in the in the right place, what she'll do usually, she'll tighten her butt cheeks and she'll raise her, as she tightens her butt cheeks, her, her, her pussy will raise towards you, whereas you give, you know that she wants more pressure. Yeah. So it's a, it's sort of a steady kind of, lick and then you when the when the diaphragm gets deeper then you can adjust pressure so now you you got movement is moved out of the way your movement is because you're laying on top her movement is moved out of the way because she's pinned down and all she has is these little movements then all you have to do is read her movement then your the way you get her to come is you gotta be us one half a step ahead of her so and and you'll know what I mean because I can see you concentrating. So like, I love this. I love when it. when she tightens her butt buttocks and Hold pushes, on, let, me off, let me take off my pants while you're talking. All right, all right cool, cool. The, uh, when she when she has the uh, oh he did <laughs> when she when she's pushing forward and you're meeting her pressure, your job is to be a half a second so that you pull away before she pulls away. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's an art. Right. Get it. So she pulls back just and you and then that force. It, so it doesn't get her to the point where it's so intense that she pulls away. You're pulling away first, which it's makes a little her, bit people yes. are forgetting. But by the way, what you're saying, two things is apropos of everything. Yes. When you when you write a joke. Yes. If you hit people over the head, I see too many people come out and they tell a joke. And then I, I farted it on her face. And you're like, okay, that you just hit him over the head with it. Right, right. The, 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 the best kind of jokes are the jokes that have a little bit of subtlety and yes. then hit slowly. And then just yes. as the people are coming to you, you pull away a little. So, yes. so, yeah. so that's, that's apropos of everything. Absolutely. The other thing, the other thing is just on, uh, on, the, on the subject of cunnilingus, uh, what people have to also realize is this, and this is, makes it a little easier to understand as well. If I can give my little piece of advice. Sure, sure. Is, uh, is, do, you, do you know that physically we all start out in the womb as women? Do you, do you, yes, do you know that? Absolutely. That's why we, that's why we have nipples. We have yeah. nipples because, because we, we might start need out them. As girls. We might need them later. <laughs> and, and, and if the, if the chromosomes align and, you, and you're going to be a girl, then those turn into breasts. What I'm basically getting at is, is the, the clitoris is, is a, is a mini penis. Yes. It really is. I mean, right. yeah. much yeah, yeah, more, yeah. it's, it's, well, a, it would if you see it, if you, ever, if you ever see like a bodybuilder chick, her clitoris will look like a dick. Like if she's and doing heavy right. juice, it'll look like a dick. Right. And, and, and if you are a boy, that clitoris turns into a penis. So right. when you think to yourself, and my wife explained this to me, when you think to yourself, it, a girl doesn't lick your dick from the top. She licks underneath where it's sensitive, the, right. the glands is where she licks. Well, if you think of it as a little penis and you just go in and you just start rubbing yeah. all over, it, it's, it overwhelms it. Yes. But when, yes. You, when you think about it like a little penis and you get underneath and you think what you, you would like, would you like right. it? You know, my wife explained, you lick up mm. the shaft of it a little, you yeah. suck on it a little, you play a little, but it's the guys that just go in uh, and they just go crazy. Oh, that would work my, on your dick. Let me get my pants. Go ahead. Yeah, I, was, I was waiting for that. <laughs> I, I got news Aaron. for both of you. I didn't start with pants on. That's uh, <laughs> you knew the way this was going. I always go. I always go sans pants. <laughs> but 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 there it is. And so I believe, and that's kind of brilliant, Dante, is that like everything in life comes down to subtlety. I think. Yes. And even yes. even even today's porno. I don't know. If well, porno. I would say. Let me push back on it. Every greatness, extraordinary greatness, is comes down to subtlety. Subtleties the, and the yeah. comic that is right in the strike zone, just right in the pocket, is the one that we perceive as the greatest. 
and, and everything, even the best yeah, yeah. football players, football yes. players, they have that. It, it's 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 not forcing stuff, and yes. and I believe that I believe that. Uh, and you, and so that was what you were saying, which is if you're not present, yes. and you're not in the in the moment, then you're going to tend to forget all that because you just want to. You be can't. Able, and you you pick it. You, you're not picking up any of the, any of those signals, so you're right. all over the place. So you have no direction because you're not picking up anything. You're just this is what I'm what I do. And one of the things that I, I wrestle with as a human being is I was very, very, I don't know how you are, Dante, or where you're at at your life, but I was very competitive as a kid. Yeah. Um, it wasn't that I had to be a comic. I had to be the best comic. And, 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 I, and I had to be, I, I even look back now at some of the guys I started with, and I feel so bad that I was in so much competition with them rather than just enjoying their talents and enjoying what they did. And like who? It, it, like who? I mean, like all the guys I started with, Mark Marin, Louis C.K., uh, you know, um, uh, well, those are my favorites. Yeah. But, um, uh, everyone. I mean, Colin, maybe Colin. 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 He's a little he's older like, than you, right? You, you know who I, I told on my podcast that I wish I had been, I, I wish I had started out with him because I would have enjoyed his talent more, was Jim Norton. Right. You know, Jim Norton was my here we started out together so i was always in this i got this tv show blah, 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 blah. instead of going like and then i got older and i got some shows under my belt and i started to feel confident about myself and then one day i was watching jim norton and i was like Man, that guy's fucking brilliant like yeah, why yeah. did i not notice that why did yeah, i not yeah. notice that all these people because i was so in my head why is i not and, why wasn't i present and ultimately you become better at everything you do once you stop going. I have to compete with everybody and I can just kind of go with the flow of like yeah. whatever talents I've been given and letting those flourish. And and I think what happens is when you look at guys like that, like like some of my, you know, my favorites was was Marin. I really like Marin. I really like the tell and I really like Patrice was like and those are very different kinds of comics, but all masters though but all very you like you said these subtle new nuances and yeah. when you're talking about but it's interesting you said that you know i don't know if you know um nathan mcintyre you know nate i don't i don't know him okay so he's a younger dude but he's really good really funny dude like you would enjoy him um yeah. uh just a, a very good at what he does and he was like, yeah, what are we going to do? We, we keep doing this shit. Like, what are we just going to keep doing spots? And we go on the road and then we're like, I'm, I'm going to start a podcast. And I go, Doug, you're so busy looking up at what you're trying. To, you're not even you have never even looked down to see how high you've gotten to even appreciate the, the fact that we get to do this in a real to get to do this thing that we love in a real way and enjoy doing it and still, you know, still get off on the subtleties and get and still getting better. I mean, one thing about you, I, I you know, because I started way after you. I didn't start till 2000. Right. Oh, OK. I didn't know that. So I got 20 in, but I used to watch you and the subtle. You used to do these really subtle things. So it's like a lot what you're talking about in, in sex. It's the same thing. It's. If you if you go, it's it's like if you go to the nth extreme, then where do you go from there? You'll never find the the sweet spot of it, you know. And and I think sex is the same way. I find that even with threesomes, doing threesomes, I kind of I'm not saying I wouldn't do a threesome. I'm just saying I don't want to be a conductor of two women tr and trying to keep the plates spinning. I want I want would want a threesome with women who are present into me and into each other. So it's that real, those real moments. Like when you're saying you met this guy who's a really good guy, his wife is a smoke show and you, you can really push that ego aside and kind of, uh, and kind of enjoy and be present. I'll tell you a great story about threesomes. So uh, I don't think I've ever told this story. So about maybe eight years ago when my wife and I were uh, st starting to date, 10 years ago we we she was open to a lot of stuff and we went to a strip club and uh and there was one of those gorgeous strippers that you're like that human being shouldn't even be allowed to walk there she's just so hot and right. and and my wife went over to tip her she was on stage and went over to tip her she's gorgeous half jamaican half italian girl her name was javana i'll remember her forever right. anyway uh <laughs> she was just she was just stunning she was a 10 
My yeah. wife went over to tip her, and, my, and, the, and she, Giovanna said to my wife, I'm trying to make the story fast, but it's really sexy. Giovanna said to my wife, fuck you, while she was giving her a dollar bill. And my wife was like, what do you mean, fuck you? And Giovanna said, you're just like all these chicks. You're going to come in here. You're going to act like you're into women. You're going to flirt with me. And then you're just going to go home. You don't have any interest in this or whatever. And my wife was like, you're talking to the wrong girl, sweetie. <laughs> so, so Jess, my wife, said to her, I'll actually, if you want to prove this, she says, why don't you come back to our room? We got room here. Come back to our room. The stripper, the stripper said to my wife, I'll come back to the room, but I don't want to have sex with your husband. I just want to have sex with you. Is, is he, will he be a good boy? Will he just watch and enjoy the show? Right. My, wife said, my wife said, Mitch is classy. He's a good guy. And I was like, listen, I don't have to do anything. If I could just watch you and my wife have sex, I'd I'm be good and happy. We go back to the hotel. My wife and I start having sex. And what usually happens with a stripper or any girl is once they really notice that you're a gentleman, yeah. they almost want to reward that. Like, it's yeah, almost yeah. like because they're so used to, especially strippers, people turn back the line and yeah. Just being groped and begged and uh, money and blah blah blah. And, uh, and I really kept my word. And all right, of a sudden, right. out of nowhere, Giovanna goes, Tell your husband to get undressed and come join us. So uh, I was like, Shh. I didn't expect it. I really right, right, didn't right. expect it. Talk about subtlety. Anyway, yeah. the story goes, I got in, I I got undressed, and Giovanna uh started to jerk me off. And I came within a minute. I couldn't even fuck like I just because it was just the excitement. She was just was so, right, 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 right. So perfect. Well, not only that, but when you don't think something's going to happen, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's over. And 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 I was able to get hard about ten minutes after that, and everything was great. We had a great time, and it was a great night. But the next day, I said to my wife, "I'm so embarrassed that I came so fast with Giovanna. Like she just took me in her hand, and all of a sudden I just started coming." And my wife said. Mitch, it's so funny how guys are in their head about that. She goes, that's like the biggest compliment you could give yeah. Giovanna. Yeah. Is that yeah. she's just so fucking so hot. hot All you, you couldn't even you. control yourself. Yeah. Right. She's like, that's a woman's power is to know she had to go. That, that didn't make her. Like, guys get in their head. Like, that didn't make her think like, oh, this pussy just came. Like, what a fucking yeah. fag. Like, yeah. it was just like what she thought was like, yeah, I'm fucking hot as shit. That this yeah. guy, when I allowed him to come join us. And then after that. We had the great, greatest sex because she, she was just so – she, you know, when girls do that, they're not doing it because they need to get – because they could get laid a thousand times. Sure. They're doing it because they want to give you a gift. Right. And if you're the guy going, I'm going to show you how long I can hold out, and I'm going to show you how good I can fuck you, and blah, blah, blah. Giovanna was just so impressed by what a gentleman I was and also yeah. just letting myself go. And so – I guess what I'm getting at is that whole spinning the t things is like if you just kind of relax and give women their power, yeah, they'll 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 repay you in a really beautiful way. Yeah. And I think it's also a matter of you you going. It's like getting in an Uber car that with a guy that you know knows how to drive. You know, <laughs> like he, he's, it's the it's the, if, he, if he's trying to get into traffic, he's like, what, what, what? Yeah. there's a so there's a level of trust. I, I say this all the time, and we talk about this on the on the podcast all the time. It's three principles that that we always try to live by. Is it's an acronym called ACE. It's authenticity, credibility, and empathy. Um, tell the truth. Uh, so it's like you go listen. I'm a, this. I, I if I can watch, it's, which is the truth. Credibility is keeping your word, not getting mm -hmm. there and changing up. So there's no. She doesn't have to feel as though you're untrustworthy. And then empathy, it's like all those things that you said about strippers and what they have to go through, just your ability to put yourself in her position of all the things that she has to go through and what's where her head is at. Um, it, it, it makes you so much more attractive because um, you can have a guy who's got a six pack with with cum gutters and he's a douchebag. And yeah, initially. The bells and whistles get you because he's hot, but then you're like, you're a fucking asshole. You know, it, and it, it's yeah. And there's nothing that makes someone more unattractive immediately, no matter how attractive they are, than being a scumbag, than yeah. being than not keeping your word. I mean, and also, you know, my wife had vouched for me. This yeah. girl trust. I, I'm a really, really big believer. I love trust. Yeah. I love trust. Trust is a beautiful thing. I hate, I hate that we have to sign agreements for everything now i hate it because 
it's turned us into a society where we can't just sit. Like, I, a lot of times if somebody comes over my house to fix something mm -hmm. and, and they walk in and I just feel they're a nice guy and they go, well, I would do this, I would do this. I always go, I trust you. You do what's going to be best for my family. And you could tell that they almost, like, when you give like, that to whoa. somebody. Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very rare that you're going to get such a dirt bag that they're yeah. going to be like, oh, man, I can screw this guy. And in my mind, if they do screw me over, well, it's their loss because I was letting them know I could have trusted them. And so right. I like right. to be that to other people as well. Yeah, I like to be that guy that I'm like, you can trust me. So when we brought her back, I was like, and then also the other thing about it is this. Strippers are so used to getting asked to yeah. do everything that it was almost kind of weird to her that I wasn't doing anything. Right, she's right. like, Whoa. Yes. yeah, she's like, and and that almost becomes really sexy. That like, oh, this guy like doesn't, he's not pushing. Like, right, right, right. Wanna, I kind of want to see what, if I can get him now. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. But it's it's it's. I think it's also you understanding what your value is and just understanding that your value is in your in your personal credibility and the truth of what your word is, it's that, I mean, there's nothing more attractive than that. I mean, a woman finds, because the untrustworthy, I, I use this analogy sometimes, you know, when, remember when Dane Cook, uh, when his brother stole $11 million from him, of right? Yeah, of course I do. I always say, wouldn't he have paid 10 million to get somebody that he could do that could do that job and not fuck up his family. You know what I mean? Just he would pay. He, he would have paid ten, yeah. a guy 10 million to not have the theft and have to put his brother in jail and his family oh. was in a disarray. Like that was worth that was worth 11 million dollars. That might have been worth 15 million, really, if you think about just that that level of trustworthy. So it's interesting. You know that you that you talk about Harry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, it's all good. I, I was going to ask Mitch and how are you able to let go of the ego to get in that place because I mean, guys I'm get not. in their heads i think it's i think isn't life just a process of constantly going i i'm gonna try you know one of the reasons i like doing my ufc podcast that i don't do anymore was learning about the mentality of fighters because because fighters no matter how much they prepare no matter how much they think they're going to win no matter how much they do everything they, they just know that eventually they're going to be knocked out. And, and I'm a big fan of, uh, and I never thought I would, but there's a fighter that I'm sure a lot of people know named Nate, Nate Diaz. Yeah. And Nate Diaz is a fighter who I never liked. He always is brash and yells at people and stuff. And I always thought, like, man, his ego's too big. Until one day I saw him talking about the fight game. And I, and I likened it to everything in life, especially what we do. And what he said was, they said to him, do you – are you scared when you go into a fight? And he said, no. And he said, I'm not scared because, and this is kind of brilliant. I expect to be knocked out. And, I, and, and, and that sounds kind of counterintuitive, but he said, I know that I'm going into an arena with people of the utmost talent. And one of us is going to get knocked out. And I'm smart enough to know that like, be I me. could be that I could be that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've and I've been knocked out. And he said, and when I was knocked out, it's the worst feeling you could imagine. He goes, You go down, you don't know what's happening, you get up, the crowd is cheering, you're confused, you've just been knocked out on a video that's gonna be on YouTube for the rest of your existence. People are gonna be watching you get knocked out. He goes, and once that's happened, you go, Oh, okay. I'm still alive. I got through it and I'm going to fight the next day. And I'm maybe going to be the guy that does that to another guy. Right. He said, so once you go, that's the worst that can possibly happen. Yeah. And I can live through it. Right. Then he said, that's when you can start to fight. Cause you go, okay, now I know I can lose. Cause there's these guys that go in and go, I can't lose. I can't lose that when they do lose, they're like, fuck, like now I'm nothing. Cause I, right. I, he goes, so, so in a weird sort of way, like letting go of my ego, like you asked Harry is, is maybe going in my mind going, What's the worst that could possibly happen in these situations? You can maybe not get hard. You can come too fast. You can, you can have a girl mock you, you know, and, and I've had all that happen. And, mm -hmm. and, and I still was able to go in and have fun with other girls. And so you start to learn that like a part of the process is the bad and the good. 
So letting go of your ego is understanding that like, no matter how good you are, you're going to, you're going to fucking knock it hard one day. Yeah. You're going to get knocked out. And yeah. one day you're going to just be a hero and you're going to fuck three girls with this great fucking big erection. And you're going to feel like a hero right. but until you accept that. Like that's a part of everything. That's how I think you let go of your ego is yeah. by understanding that that's, that's a part of being human. Right. Yeah. I mean, Con yeah. Conor McGregor didn't want to admit it. And he, and all he gets, all he's, keeps doing is getting humiliated now because right. he kept saying he would never be beat right. and he's getting the shit beat out of him. Right, right. And Nate, Nate, Nate Diaz is a good, like, Nate Diaz is a warrior, like, in the yeah. sense of, like, yeah. Jesus, like, when you watch that guy, he's bloody and swole, and he's still, because he's all in, which is funny because the same thing is true. You don't get funny until you stop giving a fuck. And until you've freaking eaten so much shit. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. And the thing about the thing about that too is even in the, in the context of women, right? In the context of women, you don't really start getting what you deserve until you're willing to walk away from something because you're it's not it doesn't feel good to you. It you're not looking at somebody else's value in the context. You know you're bringing something to the table, even if it's just honesty and truth and credibility and empathy and kindness and those things. If you know you're bringing that and you understand the value of that, first of all, I think we don't understand the value of that. Which is which is so interesting when you said about, you know, guy comes to fix the house. I always say there's a there's an analogy that I use is that my honesty sharpens your truth, that my ability to give That's you beautiful honesty, beautiful. You beautiful. give you this honesty puts a burden on you that this is a yes. gift I'm giving yes. you and you need to be responsible. Now, you could be a dick. Yeah, and, and this is the thing. You could be a dick and 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 take that and and discard it like it's worthless. But that's your loss because you'll never get that trust. Again. Like, it's such a rare thing. Yeah. It's such a, a an amazing gift. And do you want to be that person that yeah. takes that from the world? Like, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, I don't want to get dark, but I have a child now and he's four years old. And after having a child mm -hmm. now. I don't think I've ever been more horrified by child molesters. And the reason being, because when I look at my son who's four years old, the trust that he has in me yeah. and adults and the world is so beautiful. It's so pristine. It's yeah. so perfect. And I think a human being that can take advantage of that innocence, it, it, it's that personality that you go like, what kind of person goes, I'm going to, I'm going to take from the world so much that when someone gives me that much innocence, I'm going to make them pay for that. Right. And, 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 and that's why. And so I love what you just said, that that what you if you give someone that and they're willing to take it. Yeah. That says so much more about how dead of a human being they are. Yeah. That you don't lose. My, my yeah. wife and I always say that, you know, my wife and I always say that it's the person in the relationship. Like we don't cheat on each other. We did in the beginning of our relationship and we admitted it. And then we both said to each other. Okay, we're starting. We're starting right now in the clear. Who's mm -hmm. going to be the one to fuck it up? Who's going to be right. the one? And both of us said, like, especially since we are allowed to have sex with other people, like, why would we fuck up that kind of trust now? Yeah. And so we always try to remember that. That like, and that's a beautiful thing that you said. That it's just like what? And and how did you word it? I said my my honesty sharpens your truth. Yeah, and I love that because yeah. you're not the fool when someone takes advantage of that. Yeah. The little ch the little child is not the fool when someone takes advantage of their. Innocence. No, it's the person that takes advantage that's the dirtbag. And right. but you you also find that like you know our you know everybody says hurt people hurt people, you know, and usually there it's this is a reciprocal kind of it, this is a circulating thing something that happened to them. And what's interesting is um I had a a friend of mine whose father molested her up until she was 17 and it was a weird kind of thing because I'm, i mean dare i say he was actually a good father in situations like he taught her how to work on cars he taught her how to shoot guns he taught her how to pl do plumbing and put in boilers and and so what happened to her was she was really confused because that that My innocence God. yeah that yeah. innocence was destroyed but then there was this constant um, you know, 
kind of building of this relation, this intimate relationship between her and all the things that he taught her and he shared with her and stuff. And so she yeah. was a, so she could trust nobody, because even when somebody right. exhibited trustworthy, right. uh, uh, you know, trustworthy characters, characteristics, she couldn't trust it because her father gave her both. Yeah. And they wow. moved it. They got married. She married her husband and she never trusted him. I mean, he was a of guy course. who didn't cheat at all. But here's the crazy thing. She was molested in the home. They ultimately had a ranch house out in, in Jersey that was his house. And he was a cop. He used to take like he was a really good cop or a supposedly good cop. He would take like inner city kids out there and yeah. stuff and he would molest them. Right. But he would expose them to camping and fishing. It's like, oh, well, you know, good, good. on this, You know, um, but yeah. the funny thing was, even as a grown woman now, she will not clean the house like there's a, her house. The inside of the house is a fucking mess. Because it's almost it's like the, the representation of her taking care of that house is where this trap, where her where the innocent was taken from her. Amazing. Human and beings the, are amazing. And then on the outside, though, the lawn, the, the hedges, the 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 walkway, the impeccable. Wow. Like she'd uh, get on a rider mower and mow the whole yeah. place. And, the, and and what a metaphor of that is, is that there's all this mess and all this pain inside the house. Inside. and the But outside. on the outside is pristine and beautiful. And it was a metaphor for her, you know, for her self-esteem and for her pain and and, and yeah. all this stuff. And then I think the other thing is, it's funny when you talk about that. I always say this. You know, you go through this trauma. You know, when, when you know you get like you're talking about a four year old or 11 year old or something, you go through this trauma and then you're forced to survive with a very limited amount of understanding about how to deal with trauma. So maybe you come up with in your in order to move forward. Well, I must have done something to make this happen. And you yeah. take that guilt. Then you're 40 and you've learned so much more that. It really wasn't your fault, but you never reassess the tragedy and the pain from the perspective of you as a 40 year old. You're still using the solution that helped you move forward as an 11 year old. Yeah. But, yeah. Because those connections in your brain. Yeah. Are yeah. So powerful. And I think that's I was abused, not sexually, emotionally abused by my mom. Right. And and having a son now, I. I see how beautiful my job is that like, you know, my son just caused $10,000 worth of damage in our house wow. by, by, by flushing a ton of shit down the toilet <laughs> that wasn't supposed to flush and the pipe burst and, wow. and it started leaking and it's $10,000 worth of damage. And, and my son kept saying, daddy, I'm sorry. And I thought to myself, it's so interesting because at that point, I could choose a path. This is how powerful we are of yeah. fucking him up for life by going, how fucking stupid are you? Yeah. You flush your fucking Legos down the toilet. <laughs> or I could say, which I did say to my wife, because we had to calm ourselves down because it's $10,000 worth of damage. Right. <laughs> part of having a kid, part of the responsibility of having a kid is you understand that your life is going to now be ensconced in chaos because you're starting with somebody who doesn't know the rules. Yeah. So, so when you look at his little brain and you have Legos and you're like, what would happen if this, that's a natural thing to do. Yeah, yeah. So I said, so, so all my wife and I did was make a decision to tell him nothing goes down the toilet from now on ever, except toilet paper. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it does, we and not, and not too much of that. <laughs> <laughs> right. and but, on, them. <laughs> but on the other hand, every time he apologizes now, we both say to him, Max, you don't have to apologize. No, you didn't know then. We Nobody told you that. How yes. could you have known? But yeah. now we've told you. And yeah. so he's going on his little life and this incident that could have been traumatic to him. Yes. Because he yeah. could have remembered it forever if daddy kept going, what the fuck do you throw, you know, you yeah. know, that kind of stuff. All of a sudden now it's turned into me saying to him like, no, that was a learning experience. And, and it's tough yeah. to do when you're, when you, because right, you're angry. Because you're angry and you're, and you're making this decision on emotion. 
because ten thousand dollars is a trip to the Bahamas where mommy and daddy can fuck other people. That's gone now, and so so that because of your Legos, hurt. that does make it hurt a little bit more. Because of yeah. your Legos, your Legos cost us this. Year. We got cock blocked by your Legos. But your Legos have f- affected daddy's sex life really bad. Now. So so, but you do you do understand at that point the power that I could have tamed. It's this situation has become. Just a sweet little funny story now that we tell people. Right, right, and, right. And, and he's going to laugh about it one day. Yeah. And, and, and so you're right. That parent, that shame on that parent, because what he did to her is her world now. It's, that's what wired her brain. Yeah. People can be nice to you, but they can still take advantage of you. So why yes. would you ever trust anybody? Right. It, it's, it's, a, it's a mind fuck, and it's, and it's beautiful and scary the power that we have as older people it's yeah. beautiful and scary and it's mm. and it's so scary to me when people use it against the, the innocence and 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 someone once said to me like you know once you've known that someone can can can, can fuck over other people be very worrisome of, of, of them being your friend yeah because if they you know what i'm saying they, they, yeah. they're the kind of people that there's something missing in them that your trust doesn't mean anything right so. right right i had a guy i had a guy that i was counseling and uh he he had this there was this young like he's 55 and so he had never really done threesomes and like he started like st- kind of studying under me and then all of a sudden i got him into threesomes and all this stuff and i was just yeah. teaching him the you know the rules of the, the rules of engagement and um and then he had a friend of his he had he had this 24 year old hot like chick from ecuador and she was smoking hot and she was but she was arrogant and she's kind of like oh i'm i'm hot and i'm and uh he uh and and you could tell she was just very ungrateful and she was he 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 was like she she wanted to know if he was dating somebody else anybody else and he go yeah i'm i'm dating people and she was like well i that that can't happen and da, 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 you know she was just very young and arrogant and he right. he he said you know what uh, i'm okay i'm okay i i he, let me just pay for your drinks and your and i'm going to go right now you know what that what happened she she never stopped chasing him first of, of all but but the other thing was he spoke to his friend, the guy who was his friend. He was like, why didn't you just lie to her? 24 year old hot girl. And I said to him, I said, do you understand that all you need to do is have a situation where pussy is a, a, at the other end of this of the of the scale of your friendship and your trust in him? And he will he will betray you. He He's telling you. I would have lied to this girl and not told the truth to get whatever I want. To get what I want? Wow, yeah. Very true. And so all yeah. you need to do is, this is a funny thing, because I, you know, I, I don't know if you remember, but I was a male stripper for 10 years before I, I did. I remember that. Right, yeah, right. I but I always say that I never, before anybody wanted to pay to fuck me, I used to always say, I'm not a prostitute. I don't sell my body. Now, I set those boundaries up before anybody wanted to buy the product, right? And I had said it so much that that was the standard. So anytime anybody would say, oh, do you ever do extras? I go, I don't I don't sell my body. If I'm interested in somebody, I'll have sex with them. But I will right. not accept money directly for, for sexual favors. And right. they always said, well, why not? And I was like, once you, yeah. you know that old joke, um, would you fuck me for a million? Uh, of course. Then he goes, what you go? Would you fuck me for ten dollars? You go, what do you think I am? We've already decided what you are. You're a prostitute. We're just negotiating price. You know, that old joke. Well, the point is, once you cross that line, you have you have left yourself open to be to be a ten dollar hooker. You just all so now here's the scenario. Say all of a sudden you have a you have a you have a, a problem, you end up in the drug situation, and a ten dollar hit is as important as a million dollars emotionally. You've Why wouldn't you? You've opened you that door, door, you can always cross that, you can always cross that line, you can always cross that door again and again and again. And so those boundaries and the and the principles that you pull, because even if you bend your principles for the benefit of your significant other. Yeah, they benefit in an in a in a in an instant. 
The problem is that now they know you will bend your principles. It, okay. Just because they benefit from it, but the but the overall the theme next time is it won't be for you. You're not a you're a guy who has no credibility. Yeah, even yeah, if, yeah. even if it's just for her benefit, you know what I mean. And and I and I I think that's really telling because when I told you that we bring we bring, um, and and Harry, I appreciate you saying. I know we have to wrap up, but I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna keep talking and I'm just gonna rush through traffic to get my kid. <laughs> it's all good. It's I'm all not, for you, I'm, Mitch. I'm, I'm pissed at him anyway because of the fucking Lego, so he can wait at preschool for a couple hours. <laughs> Gotta maybe. teach him a little lesson. That's all. But 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 Dante brought up something. I I, I that Giovanna, the stripper, we brought back. Uh -huh. I always remember that because. Because my wife was a stripper, mm -hmm. and she had said that the reason why Giovanna fucked you, and, and by the way, look at me. I'm 5'5". Five, five. She didn't know I was a comedian. She wasn't attracted to me. She was attracted to my wife. She's offered thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for her body every day. Mm -hmm. What my wife said to me is the fact that you empowered her, that you didn't once insult her and be like, how about I just give you an extra 500 bucks and you let me fuck you with my wife? That you never put, because that's taking the power away from her. Because mm -hmm. once, you've, once you've made that decision, she has to have sex with you because she's made the decision that she's going to take $500. So it's mm -hmm. a transaction. But because I didn't offer, she was so empowered to go, this is my, my choice to give him this gift. Right. Right. I'm not, so, 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 so that's another thing that I had gotten is, is that I never ever tried to entice her. And we were giving her tons of Coke. We, we were all coked up. We were all mm. doing a lot of drugs, but never once did I tell her like, well, what are you going to do for another bump? Like we were just sharing ourselves right. with her. Yeah. And, and, and I think that that empowered her. And when you empower another person, they all of a sudden really appreciate that there's no, there's no transaction going on that all yeah, of a sudden yeah. they, the power is taken away. Cause when you pay a girl for sex, make no mistake, you've taken all the power away from her. She's right, right. accepted that she has to do this no matter what. Now. Right. Right. That is, that is probably the most redeeming cocaine drugs and stripper fucking story I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, plug your stuff, man. Uh, anything you want to plug anything? I, you can I, listen, I, I want to, I have a special coming out in probably February or March. I feel really bad that we weren't able to talk the whole complimented time. So if you promise me, if you guys like me, let's do it again in February. I'll come on in February. I'd love we'll that, Mitch. More. I'd love that, man. It's real, this sure was to, so dope, man. I love sure you, bro. The time. I love you too. Man, and, it's so and, good to see you. And you probably don't remember this, but I remember I paid you five dollars for a blowjob very early on. If you're, right, you're right. I mean, I, I mean, I was young. I had, I had you were coked up. You, were co <laughs> you don't a lot of that. a lot of five dollar bills passed through <laughs> at that time. But, uh, but what I'd love to get back on and do the full complimented time with you, and uh, and then I'll plug my special and everything, and we can have some more fun. I would love that, Mitch. It's so good to see you, man. I'm so happy for you, bro. And it's so very good to see you. Good, a good, TV. warm, awesome. warm feeling, bro. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Thanks for doing go it, get man. that little, go get that little pipe wrecker. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's sleep, he's sleeping in the garage for the next couple months. So. Yeah. Good to see. Right, tell your you wife me. I said hey. I don't know if she'll remember me, but tell her I said hey anyway. I will, Dante. I love seeing you, man.